Hey guys, welcome to another home lab series video today. In today's video, we can continue what we were doing in, in our last video here. Um, and we're going to be doing uh, the Splunk forwarder for one of our Linux boxes. We'll probably just pick GitLab box, honestly, that we've already done. And forward logs from that box over to our Splunk server to see it being in jest and then showing you what you know, you can essentially do what Splunk a little bit with it. So this video is also sponsored by me, myself, and I. So if you enjoy the content, feel free to, um, you know, sponsor me if you want to or send me some free swag or hardware. My email is in the description below. So, okay, let's get started, guys. Okay, so the first thing that we'll need to do, so we have our Splunk server. Um, this, you know, you got the web GUI. Um, so we'll need to actually do a few prep work before we can actually ingest data in. Um, the first thing is actually making it so that you can actually ingest data in. Um, so by default, you actually have to um, set up the forwarding and receiving. So in here, there is forwarding and receiving in settings. And then we configure receiving because essentially we don't set it on receiving at all. So by default, the receiving port for Splunk would be 9997. So we're going to just do 9997. Um, so we'll save that. You can obviously do a custom port if you want, but in this case, we're going to just leave it as, as default. No harm in it in this case. And then, um, because we will want to actually set up um, essentially Linux logs and stuff like that, by default, even if you install the universal forwarder, it won't actually ingest logs until it knows what logs to even ingest. So this is where Splunk apps and add-ons come in, right? So you have all these managed apps, all these things by default. So we will need to actually add the app. So there's an actually add-on for uh, Unix and Linux. This essentially gets you kind of like the default, like, hey, these are like the logs that, you know, from most Linux machines or Unix machines, you could actually for, uh, get from a server. And then we'll select which ones we want and have those forwarded. So the, the first thing to note here is um, to log to actually download, you have to log in. You can use the same Splunk login that you created in the last video when you had to download Splunk. So we agree to download, we'll download it. And it is downloaded. So then you can go here, you can actually uh, install app from file. So we'll choose a file. We'll add the Splunk add-on and upload. So then, then you have to require to set it up. So we'll, we'll set it up. Um, spin, spin, spin. All right. So essentially, we'll tell you, hey, you know, what what do you want to actually grab? So we're just going to enable all here. We don't have a metrics index, so we're just not going to do anything with this. But you could create a metrics index and have metrics go to it. Um, in this case, we're not going to do that. Um, and then we'll just enable all the scripted things too. So. Um, this includes like uh, uptime, protocol, password, um, LSOF, stats, PS, CPU, bandwidth. So there's a lot of actually things that you can grab from this. And then you have the time interval in seconds of how, when it checks. So in this case, bandwidth.sh will run every 60 seconds. CPU will run every 30 seconds. So you can get like consistent stats, right? So then you hit save here. All right. So now, now you have all the apps things can, can configured. What we're going to do is now install the Universal Forwarder. So you can actually Google search Universal Forwarder, uh, Splunk Universal Forwarder. It'll bring you to a, uh, another downloads page, similar to like how you had to do Splunk. You'll need to log in with your account and then it'll bring you to the downloads page. So in this case, we're going to go with a 64-bit because all of my servers are 64-bit. Um, if you're running like a Raspberry Pi or something on ARM, you can do the ARM. And I don't even know what these two other ones are. So I'm going to just ignore those and figure those out later if, if I ever decide I ever need them. But for the most part, if you don't know, you're probably running 64-bit for the most part. So we're gonna download the RPM again. So we hit that. We'll log into our GitLab server. Drag in that local. Oh, I need to... Uh... Type in the right password. That's what I need to do. Typing in passwords is hard, guys, you know? Um, I don't, I think that we get it installed, but we can do the install here just to make sure it's actually installed. Grab the RPM over here. Yep, it's installed. So now we're going to grab the RPM. So now we have the Splunk forwarder. So we can do the same thing. We do RPM hyphen I Splunk. 
for it. Eh? Now, the thing here with this install versus the other install, the user is actually Splunk FWD for forwarder instead of just Splunk. Um, the, the difference is so that you can actually know that you're running a f the forwarder here as opposed to not running a forwarder. So what we'll do here is do a Splunk start accept license. We will create the username and password. So you got to create a username and password for every Splunk instance. Ideally, you probably put them the same in case you, you need to ever log in even on a universal forum. So now that that's installed, um, what we can do here is Splunk add forward server and then Splunk uh, dragon dot local with 9997. So this will essentially add the forwarder and send any data over to 9997 on Splunk .local. But we also need to set the deploy pole. Um, so the Splunk server also acts as a deploy service. So like if a new app is installed or you create like a custom log or something, that the, the Splunk server also deploys that configuration out to all the universal, any, any of the universal folders that essentially match the criteria of whatever server it is, right? So you actually have to also set it so that it actually grabs from well, the deploy server can deploy out to any of them and it pulls, hey, is there any new configs that I need to, to grab down? So we essentially do the same thing, dragon.local, but the port is 8089. So that's just the default port for Splunk for the deploy server. So we'll add that in. And then we'll just restart Splunk because we should restart Splunk. Um, actually, um, since we added the app in, we should also restart the Splunk service on that um, so that it can grab the new app configurations um, and apply them. So we'll do a Splunk restart over here too. This one will actually take a few minutes, I believe. So we will give that a few minutes while that goes. <clears throat> and then while we wait, this is going to error out because it's actually restarting. Forwarder Splunk. Um, but essentially, this will give us the ability to be able to log in and uh, log into the Splunk web GUI and essentially query for stats or whatever logging based off of default um, Splunk stuff. So the other thing I will show you guys actually is Splunk.dragon.local is the config file for apps. So if you actually become the Splunk user, so the home directory up Splunk, then Etsy and then apps, this is your apps directory. So this will include both, you, uh, this will include all the apps that you installed from that page that we were on earlier. So you can see that the Splunk T-A-N-I-X is here. So you can actually configure this directly if you wanted to customize or do something else specifically for this app, I would not recommend that um, in the case of, you know, updates and things like that, because that doesn't, I mean, you updating it makes it a lot harder because you need to know, hey, did, did I break it or did the update break it, right? Um, so usually I try to keep apps the, the same as possible so that when it does upgrade, it knows that it's going to upgrade correctly. But you can also look in here to kind of see, hey, what is it actually like looking for? So if you actually look in the local directory, there's an inputs. So you can see how in here that what we did in the GUI, things are set as false versus true. You can actually set the index. So in this case, because we don't have an index set for this, it's gonna just go to the main index. But say for example, you wanted to create like an OS index and everything goes to like the OS index for this versus something else, right? Um, indexes are very important because doing indexes will allow you to essentially be able to specify, hey, you know, I know that I'm looking for very something, something very specific in this index. It's not gonna query anything else. Just all the events in that index. Um, this makes it easy for you people to kind of not wildcard be like, I don't know what index, so I'm going to just search all the indexes or whatnot, or search for like number of events. Because if you have an index that is, you know, just what you need versus trying to search everything, you're searching a small subset of events versus all the events, which in a home lab probably won't matter, but in a corporate environment when you have hundreds or thousands of servers sending in data, you want your query to be quick and 
it's not going to be very quick when it has such millions of events. So now we can see it restart. So we will reload this page here. We'll log back in. And ideally, I could be wrong. Ideally, it should it should start populating here. And we do have logs. So you can see how like we got PS logs. We'll probably have other things. So we got CPU. So it actually showed, showed me some CPU stats also. Um, CPU time, low percentage. Uh, we got, I mean, and essentially this is your default Linux, Unix app. Um, things that you can grab. So you can see how like there's all these processes. So we got Splunk D as a process. We got System D running, um, and the, you know this is just nice. You got you got you like your base data. Um, we'll probably create a separate video on how to create like an app and get custom logs though, because that's very important. Because this won't grab any custom logs. This just grabs like your basic like vol log stuff, PS stuff, CPU stuff. I think it also does memory. Oh yeah, got some mem stuff processes so like it doesn't it won't get you everything that you really want so you have to configure things that you actually really want so we'll do that in a separate video of showing you what you guys would really want um the last thing that i'll show you guys here is in the folder management um you can see in here that it you can see that it's actually forwarding and configured for the both the deployment and the forwarding stuff so you can see how um we actually have the server here and it's actually reporting, right? So it phoned home like the last few seconds. So if you're trying to figure out whether or not your logs are actually, your, your server is actually connected to your Splunk instance or can, you know, get the deploy stuff or whatnot, this is where you would want to go into settings and uh, forwarder management. Um, this is this is going to be the, the easiest way to know if it's working or not. Um, the one other thing that I will tell you guys um, is, Splunk, if you don't know where to look, you're you're gonna have a long, hard trouble trying to get everything configured. So the other place that I would recommend is looking at the Splunk logs, which is in your Splunk home directory, op Splunk forwarder, um, var log Splunk, and then the log is Splunk D dot log. So tailing this log will essentially kind of hopefully help you figure out, hey, where is it airing? Is it even connecting or is it not connecting? And what, what to look out for? Um, because essentially it should hopefully show up here. Some of it can be a little bit de it can, like you have to decipher it, um, but hopefully it should tell you, hey, this is a timeout or hey, this, you know, I can't find the server or something, right? So th that's where it will be. So you can see this running phone home. This is connecting to the deploy server on the 8089. So if you don't see this, it's not connecting to the deploy server. And then in here, where well, you can see the, these um, connected to index, this, this is, shows that it actually was able to connect to the receiving indexer um, on the 9997 point. So highly recommend if you're running into any issues with Splunk to look at the Splunk D dot log um, and, and kind of help you troubleshoot where you need to go. So. There you go, guys. That is how you set up a universal folder on a Linux box and install the Unix Linux app to grab stats for Splunk. So if you enjoyed the video, let me know. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.